this section is talking about the nervous system and it starts with this extremely painful picture of stepping on the Legos, which I don't know if you've done that before, but it's one of my least favorite things on the planet to step on. Um, so then this is a picture of a neuron and um, your nervous system in general um, has neurons and the neurons pick up their, their special cells, but they pick up sensations from the outside world, the environment, and then basically they, they um, forge a path either up to your um, spinal cord or up to your brain where the message is interpreted and a response is created and then it's sent all the way back so that um, to your muscles so that your body can respond. So this is the general um, uh, shape of a neuron. And it's interesting because in many, many, many things in nature that you see, the form of something fits the function. And what does that mean? You know, like the horns of a deer, what would you think those would be for? Well, they're fighting and they're kind of sharp and hard and big. And so um, the form of what they need to do fits the function. Well, here in the neuron is the same thing. So essentially you have these dendrites at the end that pick up sensations from all over the place. They're kind of spindly and fingery and they kind of go all over the place so that you can pick up sensations kind of from any direction. In the middle is the cell body that holds the main part of the cell with the nucleus in the very center. Here along um, this long skinny part is called the axon. And the axon specifically carries the message that needs to be taken somewhere. And then um, at the very end are axon, neuron, um, axon endings. And these guys will connect up with the next set of dendrites to send the message on to the next neuron. But you can see how long each um, nerve is. They are really um, long. Um, so there's three different types of neurons. Um, one is uh, sensory neurons that um, collect the impulse from receptors in the skin. Um, they feel sensations. Then there are the interneurons, which are here in the brain or in the spinal cord. They kind of almost interpret the message and then move it back to the motor neurons which connect into muscle to get your body to have a reaction to whatever's happening. So this is kind of a horrifying picture <laughs> to put your hand directly on a stove. Ugh, I hate burns. So I find this picture horrifying. But um, if for some reason you were to do something like this, and I can't fault this person because I did something like this when I was a kid. I, I didn't know if an iron was hot and my parents were not in the room. And I don't know why I thought this was a good idea, but I decided to put my hand directly flat on the middle of the iron to test if it was hot. And it was about like this picture where it got totally fried. Um, I'm sure some of you guys have or know somebody that has had a really bad burn experience. So it's kind of, it's really terrible. But in this picture, if you felt something very hot, um, your sensory neurons are gonna pick that up. It will send the message to an interneuron. Um, in this case, this is such a horrific um, injury to this person that the interneuron will just stop the message right there. It, it won't even send it up to the brain right away. It will literally formulate a response in the spinal cord um, called the interneuron and will send a message back to the mo motor neurons um, to get the muscles to move right away and move your hand off of that hot thing. This is called a reflex arc. And reflex arcs, um, sometimes you see like a ball flying at your head. Sometimes you see like um, your, your chair starts to wobble and it starts to fall or something like that where something starts to fall and you just reach out to catch it. A lot of times in those situations where reflexes were in play, a lot of people will say, I didn't even think about it, I just did it, you know? And some people have better reflexes than other people. Um, but the reflex arc is, the reason why you didn't even think about it is because it happened in your spinal cord. It didn't really process as, your, as a thought. Your body's just like, something's flying at your head, move right now. And you just moved. Um, 
So that's how that works. It's really a self-preservation in an emergency situation that reflex arcs exist. They're kind of cool. So how does a nerve impulse get carried? Well, this is really complicated. So I'm just going to explain more the surface explanation of what you need to know for the test. The main thing is that outside of the cell, there's a very positive charge and inside of the cell, there's a very negative charge. Well, usually things move from like high concentration to low concentration. So in order to maintain this, it's called a gradient. Um, in order to maintain this gradient where all the negative is inside and all the positive is outside, it takes a lot of energy and it needs to be maintained by your body to have that. Okay. But then when a message is ready to be carried, those negatives and the positives end up switching in this kind of gate that flows forward. It, it, they flow out in and out of these gates and it's called the sodium potassium pump and um, they flow out along the line and that specifically is what is carrying the message. Um, and in case you need to know this in general, how is this pumped out? Well, two um, potassium ions are pumped into the neuron and three sodiums are pumped out. This is the actual gradient in the sodium potassium pump. So, um, that's the general, um, take on how this is working. So the positives outside, the negatives inside, and as the message moves along, the message is right here in the lighter green. As it moves along, the negatives go back outside and the positives come in along this gate as it moves. Okay. Um, all right, moving on, we are going to go to this part, which was the dendrite. So back here, we took, did I pass it? I did. So back here, we said that this was an axon right here. Okay. That this is the axon. And here's a blown up picture of the axon. Well, there's two. There's two large pictures of axons right here. And the axon specifically has these green patches and these orange spots that are a lot smaller. These green patches are called the myelin sheath. And the orange spots are the channels where the sodium potassium pump will work, where you have the positives outside, the negatives inside. So these are the only places where um, along these channels, those are the only places where the sodium and potassium can be exchanged. The whole rest of this green, nothing can come in and out. So this is sort of like a freeway um, where on the freeway in between exits, traffic is moving pretty fast because nobody's coming in, nobody's coming out. It's just, you stay straight in your lane and can go really fast. It's where people can merge on and off of the freeway that it really slows down the freeway, right? So the same thing is true along an axon. So these little green patches called the myelin sheets, um, I've always thought of them as like almost like the spots on Mario Kart where like the arrows are going forward and you can go really fast and zoom. The message really zooms right here really fast and goes really slow right here and zooms really fast and goes really slow right there. So specifically, um, the nodes that are in between, they slow down the impulse. Um, you could think of it as like a stoplight or like a freeway on ramp or off ramp. And the Mari or the <laughs> myelin sheets. Um, are like the Mario Kart where it goes faster or slower. I'm sorry, I'm calling them the Mario Sheets. Now you can have different um, problems with this. Different genetic disorders will actually break this down, will break down your myelin. And if your myelin gets broken down, that can be a huge problem. A few genetic disorders do that. It can be a huge problem because then the message for those reactions and for those, um, you know, for the any message that would be sent gets is is going slow it's not going as fast as what it could um so it's it can be a very large problem okay so um down here we have the synapse is a space in between from one neuron to the next one this little space in between is called a synapse and across the synapse 
where the um, axon endings of one are grabbing onto the dendrites of the next to send the message, a neurotransmitter, which is a chemical, has to carry that message across and give it to the dendrites to, of the next um, neuron. So um, if you have an impulse that can't cross this gap um, between the... Um, between the neurons, then you probably have a neurotransmitter problem. It's probably malfunctioning. And what can cause a neurotransmitter to malfunction? Um, yeah, drugs can do it. D various drugs, and we'll talk about those, um, as some of them. Uh, like heavy metals, some people have been exposed to lead or mercury or different um, heavy metals. And those metals actually come in and concentrate on your nerve endings and if they're concentrating there and this is an electrical impulse it's like a little piece of metal it's almost like having a fork or something stuck in all your little neurons and it'll short out your neurons as it moves along so that's why heavy metals are so important not to get them in your body because there's no way really to get them out um, in addition you can have genetic disorders that can cause some problems here interestingly you have pain receptors in every single part of your body except for the brain i don't know why um, but the brain does not um, have pain receptors in it so it cannot feel pain i don't know if why if like if you would think of a bad memory and it would actually feel painful i don't know um but you don't have it there um at the end of the book there is a question that asks you to figure out how long it would take for a message to be carried um so if you were to find out how long it would take for a signal to go from the toe to the spinal cord um in this case you would divide the length of the nerve, which is 0 0.914 meters in this one, 0 0.914, and you would divide it by the action potential, which is 107 to get your answer. So the answer is going to be a very small decimal because the answer is for a message to move, the answer is very fast. It goes very fast, but you'll have to figure out the answer to that.